all vertebrates have uh, what we call an inner ear, a middle ear, and an inner ear system. Uh, in terrestrial animals, the middle ear are these bones that are, uh, they call the incus, the stapes, and the malus, that are jointed in such a way that they take the diaphragm energy and they convert it into mechanical energy. Uh, and that goes into the cochlea, which is a spectacular uh, organ uh, that defies uh, short description. The thing in a human being is the size of a pea, but it gathers all the acoustical information of the world around us and converts it into amazing amounts of, uh, you know, we synthesize music and location and threats and environmental all through this little organ. Um, but how it gets there through these little bones uh, is something that's pretty common to all terrestrial vertebrates, um, birds and, and mammals. Um, that is, they're also contained, I've got a few bones here, they're contained in, uh, well this is, I'm going to use a seal, this is a, this is a, um, an a elephant seal, and um, if you take the jaw, you look here and you see these two, what they call auditory bulla, and that contains the cochlea and all the other kind of hearing mechanisms that we use, the semicircular canals, all that to, that's associated with our hearing. Now, there are a lot of morphological differences between the different bulla. Uh, humans, our bulla is not external. Let's this back here. We don't really, we have mildly external bulla here, but really where the uh, rubber hits the road in terms of human hearing is this inside. That's where we call that the Petrus Pyramid. That has all the auditory equipment in our inner ear. And uh, there is a little process here that are, it innervates, that the nerves come out and go directly into our cranium. So we have very direct contact between our uh, ear innervation systems in our, in our, um, in our brains. Uh, the Petrus Pyramid, just by the way, is also uh, incredibly hard. That's the, one of the densest bones in the human body. It's uh, as dense as teeth are, and there's a reason for that, which we won't go into at this point, but perhaps in a further chapter we'll do this. Okay, the auditory bulla of, this happens to be a sea lion, California sea lion, and you see the bulla out here, they're external, they're fused, they call that fused to the skull. Uh, these animals are, while they're amphibious, they go in the water, uh, they are more terrestrial than their cousins, the pinniped the seals, like this one here. Now, you see the difference between these two. These are very large, so they have very large uh, hearing organs. And they're also, you can kind of see that there's a little slot around here. It's not entirely fused to the skull. So that has, gives us a cue in terms of how these animals hear. Um, further, if we get into, this happens to be a long-nosed common dolphin. Got the very long nose. And this lower jaw here is part of its hearing, but the auditory bulla and these are not attached at all. In fact, they've fallen out. I wasn't able to, to um, collect those for some reason. They were lost. But um, what happens with these animals, instead of having an outer ear like terrestrial animal, mammals do, they have this lower jaw. And the lower jaw, you would think would be solid because it's having to bite things, but actually it's quite light. It's got this, what they call uh, a pan here. Um, and that whole jaw is filled with uh, an acoustic lipid that conducts sound into this auditory system right here. And that's how dolphins hear. So they make sound, we'll talk about that later as well, they make sound through this melon on top of their head, but they receive sound among other ways, but most predominantly through this acoustic lipid system. So that is the way that uh, odontocetes, toothed whales, here. Here's a, a bottom jaw of a harbor porpoise. It's, again, it's very thin. Hear that? And uh, it's got that hole down there, and that's full of that lipid. So that's how 
the tooth whales. So we mentioned there's a morphological difference between California sea lion here and the elephant seal, the auditory bulla, and also the fact that these are less, they're not fused to the skull as these are. Here's a harbor seal. It also has very large, and you can really see the holes there where it's not fused. So that, there, that gives us a clue as to how these animals hear. They, they don't have our ears because they dive very deep. In fact, these guys here, they dive down thousands of feet. And so they need to protect their ears from the pressure. Um, the sea lions will only dive down 100 feet or so, maybe a little more than that. Um, now we have something we call uh, convergent adaptation. This is an alligator. And he has these little holes on the top of his head that feed into a hearing organ, a diaphragmatic hearing organ. So that's above water and into his teeny little pea brain. He has a remarkably small brain. Uh, anyways, those holes convert terrestrial or above, I should say, above water sounds into this animal's hearing system. But we don't have auditory bullet here, but what we do have is a lower jaw that has these windows to them. And again, they're hollow, if you can kind of see in there. And that also has an acoustic lipid. So that tells us something about the hearing of these things. This is not a very well-known fact. In fact, I haven't seen any scientific papers on this yet. We're working on it that these animals actually have two hearing systems. They have one for above water and then one for below water. And you'll see this on, I got a little skull here, a little window right there. It's kind of that, it's clear, it's exposed. It's a diaphragm. So it kind of looks like the diaphragm of the inner ear of humans, but in fact, it's below water and it's kind of a jaw system. So that's a little bit about the morphology of this acoustical lipid and underwater hearing systems.